So here we are. This is the first video of me going into the Buganda History Museum. As a Ugandan myself, I'm from one of the 56 tribes that are known and found to be in Uganda. I'm from the Buganda Kingdom and today I'm about to find out about my heritage and this is the historical site. This is the largest ethnic group in Uganda uh, known as Bugandas. We speak Luganda and I'm currently in the country of Uganda. So yeah, it's an experience. So here we are. This is uh, the most recent king, Ronald Muenda Mutebi II. And he's one of the kings of the Buganda Kingdom. Actually, he's the king of the Buganda Kingdom. I believe there are 50 plus tribes in Uganda. It's the Buganda Kingdom. For sure. So here we are at the Buganda Parliament. One step forward for the Buganda Kingdom as it's moving forward. So, in the back Okay. Oh, okay. Disabled ramp. So, uh, equal access for all. This is a disability ramp. Okay. Yeah. So, right. As my uncle said, this, this is a disability ramp um, for equal equality to allow them access to the Buganda Kingdom's Parliament. And this is the entrance. These are clans. These are clans, okay. okay. So, how many clans are there? There are 56 clans. 56 clans in the. These are the big families which you belong to, but each clan has a totem symbol. Okay. And these are totems which identify the clans you belong to. Uh, they can be animal, it can be a plant, for sure. a bird, mm. a fish, or a plant. So they are classified under those. And alongside the natural mile, those are the clans which are the trees which are outside the natural road. There are 56 trees representing 56 plants in the land. So there's 15. Mm -hmm. Most of the plants up to here, everybody is supposed to lie behind the temple to your clan. For him, he just moves as you tonight. Where there is a roundabout in the middle, nobody is supposed to pass through at least the king of Uganda kingdom. He does the turn in this room. Right? And those are poles. And what do the poles re represent? 56 clans? Uh, when our king is inside, it's when you see all the flags for each clan when they raise them up. When he's inside, we normally raise a flag for Uganda and even for Uganda. This uh, either side of the three poles. But since it's a leaf of uh, Christmas holiday, that's why you see the poles are empty. And the king has his own flag, and it's inside, they also raise his flag up there. Uh, okay. So clans are all totems. There are some background tiles they chose those clans. Mm. Some are dangerous to that family, some protected that family, some are good to that family. That's why we belong to those clans. Each clan has its own names. And if I introduce myself to you, you can easily know the clan which I belong to. This is the same names which you have. Okay, for sure. And it's, uh, it wasn't a matter of choosing whatever animal or whatever bag. 
the Dasamba commands. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a chance to choose a tribe, a clan, or a region once you follow three all the identities from your dad. Oh, so each clan follows the father's identity. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, all Uganda lineage is through father's identity. So the backgrounds of individuals is from fathers, yes? Yeah. Okay. So the mom can't make a clan. For sure. Because we marry outside the family. Mm -hmm. And the children takes the daddy's identity. Mm -hmm. Whereby it's a taboo to eat your own clan if it's edible or summer edible. So eat your own clan, what does that mean? Um, we have clans which are edible like grasshoppers. For sure. Like uh, lungfish and others. Okay. okay, so if you're from the grasshopper clan, you can't eat grasshopper. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's an incest to marry anybody from the same clan because you're marrying to your brother or your father. Oh, wow. It's also an incest to marry anybody from your mom's clan mm -hmm. because you're marrying to your mother or your uncle. So okay. besides the two clans, you're allowed to marry anybody from the 50. Four which have remained besides it. So within the Buganda Kingdom, yes? Yeah? Okay, and suppose you marry outside of the Buganda Kingdom to another kingdom. Is that okay? It's okay because intermarriages are there. For sure. Mm -hmm. uh, to the family. There are some that one that mm -hmm. due to the fact that the cultures are different. Right. Because you can marry from Bunyoro or Angola Kingdom totally with different from Buganda. Mm. And remember, Buganda uh, started in 12th century. Uh, Buganda is the most dominant kingdom among the kingdoms that you have. In Uganda, we have today, yes? We have six major kingdoms, and the Buganda is one of them. Mm. Yeah. So, Buganda is the strongest kingdom. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 So, Buganda is sorted within the central part of Uganda. When you reach Kampala city, that is Buganda. So, that's the center of Buganda, Kampala. Okay. So Buganda, in the eastern we have Kusoga Kingdom, mm -hmm. western we have Ankole, we also have uh, Toro Kingdom, mm -hmm. and the uh, east north we have uh, Bunyoro Kingdom, mm -hmm. which are five major kingdoms mm -hmm. we have, though we have other chiefdoms which are within Uganda. Mm -hmm. Out of the 48 million people which are within Uganda, Buganda is almost 16 million people. Okay, okay, so it's a large it's percentage. Really difficult. The men in Uganda to marry outside their tribe. Because the culture is different, the way how we respect the husband is totally different from others because we kneel for the husbands here in Uganda. Mm -hmm. But in other kingdoms, you don't do that. Oh, they so have they their own culture. Completely different. Yeah. Okay, it's their own way of life. Yeah. Okay. So women in Uganda, it's easier for them to earn, to marry outside because you can bear with the situation. Mm -hmm. But it depends on the family where you belong to. Mm -hmm. Your dad can't say, you, you, he will not allow any man from any other tribe. And you have to accept that because blessings are for families. For sure. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Interesting. So this is a bushback antelope. We have lion, elephants, uh, bang, buffalo, rhinoceros. We have uh, a statunga at the top. This side you have the hippopotamus clan. The uh, hippopotamus, we have the colbus monkey, we have the CVT cat, GVT cat. Well, there is a, a, a flog, it's supposed to be a cow. A cow, okay. Uh, a tailless cow, which is uh, instinct right now. You can't find them. They mm -hmm. used to be in the western part of Uganda. Okay. But right now you can't find them. A bit why? They've been eaten? Uh, they're be, uh, and they're few in numbers. For sure. And they're in only one part, they are not in the central parts of so, Uganda. So they were just poached and yeah, eaten. That's the reason why you can't find them. But the people who designed these totems. They thought of a vlog which wasn't right. Mm. It's supposed to be a tailless car. For sure. Okay. So this side you have others. Since I've told you, you have 56 months in Uganda. And these are others. Yeah, as you see, we have Heidi Crow. This is uh, a wild piece. Mm. 
and this is a stylator which sells baskets. And I've told you which clan has the official duty to the clan, mm -hmm. to the king. Of the specific clan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm from the Pagodian clan, I'm responsible for the king's alone. Okay. And when you we enter inside the, the parliament, you might find the throne there, because there is no end of the clan which is supposed to uh, protect the king besides the Buganda the clan, the Pangolin clan. Oh, the Pangolin clan. Yeah, each clan here has the official duty to the king. Oh wow, as in to the Buganda king or their own king? Only for the Buganda king. Okay, okay. Pay that official to the king. Wow. So this is a hat man mm -hmm. and this is a monkey. I've told you we have backgrounds, mm -hmm. how they chose this clan. Mm -hmm. Some are dangerous to that family, some protected that family, some are good to that family. Mm -hmm. And with the children, we take the dead clan, and I've told you. You don't have a chance to choose any clan, clan mm -hmm. or tribe or religion. Once you're born, the identity is from your dad. Mm -hmm. But the king of Buganda, once mm -hmm. you become a king, you divert to the man's clan. Mm -hmm. uh, simply because he wanted to give chances to these clans to unite them but not to discriminate them. Right now, the king, his mother, mother is from the man king. And they're happy to have the king on the throne. Meaning that we we'll get another king, he will be from the another clan because he's not allowed to marry anybody from the mom's clan. So, and others will be happy to have the king on the throne. That is uniting those clans. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example where a monkey about the background, which I've talked about. There was once a family. The, uh, the mom or the wife wake up early in the morning to prepare breakfast for the husband. She had the baby crawling in the compound because the kitchen was outside. So she forgot to bring salt as she was preparing and she went inside to collect that salt. This animal came out of the tree, picked the baby and climbed the tree with the baby. Eh? The mom looked for the baby, the baby wasn't there. And then looked for the husband, called the husband to look for the other baby. But after some time, they had the baby crying up the tree, and they wanted to throw stones to this animal so that they can get that baby. Mm -hmm. So, oh, uh, the idea is that if they throw stones to this animal, the baby might fall and they lose their baby, or it will jump over other branches and go with their baby. They went to the traditional healers to seek solutions where they can get their baby, and they realized that. Uh, they, they, they advised them to prepare local food which are eaten by this animal and even fruits which are eaten by this animal. Among the fruits which they prepared, those were the yellow bananas, uh, the jackfruit, um, avocados and others. Mm -hmm. So this animal came out of the tree seeing the yellow bananas mm -hmm. and then pressed the baby aside and started eating the yellow bananas. Mm -hmm. So that's how they got their baby, and mm -hmm. they were happy to receive their baby again. Mm -hmm. That family, there and then they belonged to this animal. So it was dangerous to that family of taking their baby, that's the reason why they belonged to this animal. For sure. And it's called the monkey in our local language because it collected, it picked the baby, that's why it was called Enchima. Enchima, okay, to catch Enchima. So, uh, each one has its own background. This mm -hmm. is a snot elephant fish. These are grasshoppers. This is a mountain lizard. This is an excretor. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a ribback antelope. This is a, a, a quantity pod. This is a dog, cat rat, and even gabion. So the other side, you have others. Mm -hmm. I like. Uh, a climbing yam first. Mm -hmm. Down we have a jackal. We have a mushroom that wants to entertain the king. We have a specific dance which is called a magundu in Alaka language. And that's the dance which is uh, uh, performed by that clan. Mm -hmm. That is a large black ant. We have land fish. This is hyperchromis. We have an orange This is an otter. We have a uh, our crested crane, and this is uh, Statunga. We have uh, 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 a pangolin, I belong to this clan. Mm. This is loaf water, that is clouds, mm. and this is rain. This is loaf, and this is water. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So the water which comes out of the roof, those who belong to that clan are not allowed to use that water for cooking, washing plates, or any other. And this is an aquatic pond. So those are the 56 clans which you have. Mm. And we're going to the parliament of Bogana Kingdom. That's the main entrance, but you're not going to be able to use the main entrance because you're not parliamentary. So we're going mm -hmm. to use the gallery up so that you can get all the difference between the central government parliaments and the Uganda Kingdom. Chilling in Juana. So it's the Parliament of Uganda Kingdom, mm. which was built in 1953 to 55 during the reign of King Freddy, which is at all, the father to the current king. So Freddy completed his studies at Cambridge University of England, and after there, he got a chance of visiting some of the European countries, and among the countries which he visited, that was Northern Ireland in a city called Belfast. There is a parliament which is called Somont Parliament. That's why he got the design, and they designed this building. Okay, to copy Stormont in Northern Ireland, yeah? Yeah. Okay. The design uh, was from the company called Copwell and Freeman, which was in Kampala by that time. The engineers which you built this one, those were Singham Brothers in Kampala. Singham Brothers? Yeah. Bali Bayindi? Bayindi. Okay. Yeah. And the, it costed four millions by that time, which was equivalent to $572,000 during that time. It's a lot of money, even now. And the first session was on 19th December, 1955. The first Prime Minister by that time was called Michael Chintu. The first speaker in this parliament was called Lafayette Kasule during that time. Kasule, eh? Yeah, clan. And Gege clan, yeah, for sure. Where you see a platform, that's where the king sits. The throne is not there because the family and clan are responsible for that throne. They bring the throne when the session is going to start, like 15 minutes. They can't leave the throne there. Due to the fact that once the prince sits on that throne, it means that it has overthrown the king. That's the reason why he can't leave the throne there. It's one of the regarias which are kept in that official residence for the king, where you're going. And where you see these long chairs for the speaker, because the owner of this parliament is the speaker. The small chairs for the clerk writes the minutes, and that is the board for the laptops which he uses when he's writing minutes. Uh, when the king is there, the speaker is not allowed to sit in his own chair because the first person to conduct the session, that was the king. That's the reason why they can't face opposite to each other. He joins the seats of the ministers and on the left hand side, the first two laws are for the prime minister and all the ministers of Uganda. The first two laws on your left hand side, that is for the planets. First row on your right hand side, that is for the princesses and kings. The second one is for any visitor from the central government. Most cases they invite the vice president of Uganda with the Boganda caucus who are working within the government of Uganda. But this time round, I think they're going to invite the uh, prime minister because it's one of the kingdoms of U U Uga kingdoms which are in Uganda. Because all the sessions here are in our local language, Uganda. Uganda, okay. And the uh, third call 
third row, that is for the, uh, the chiefs for the counties, because we have 18 counties in Uganda, and the last one, those are for the executive directors within this kingdom. This gallery is for all visitors who want to attend the session, and their duty is to clap hands, to laugh, but not to utter any single words. When the king is there, there are only three people who speak in this parliament, which is the speaker, the prime minister, and the minister of information. Arguments are not allowed in this parliament when the king is there. Mm. Besides, when the prime minister has gone and conducted the session, arguments are there. Dress codes, women put on a gomesi, men put on a council, um, like uh, Muslims, mm -hmm. their codes. And then they add on a gun to differentiate that like, these are chiefs, these are clan heads, these are ministers, or any other. Um, this is which they discuss in this parliament are not political, they are traditional. Most cases are on land, because that's all the income of Uganda Kingdom. Uh, they collect all the income from there. So Through taxation or? No. Through taxes? No, not good. We do lease holds on okay. that land because we can't own that land. For sure. And uh, there is the issue of education. We have a lot of young ones who lose their parents. Wow. And guardians. They need of school fees and tuition, but they don't have that. The king has come up with scholarships and bursaries so that he can help those young ones. That's why we have the means of education up there so that they can give them their scholarships and even bursaries. Even if you're not in Uganda, mm. you can enjoy those scholarships and bursaries so long as you don't steal parents or guardians. Another issue, sometimes they go beyond to the parliament, like as you see, we had the Ebola, mm. we had COVID-19, mm. we also have uh, murderers in Mahasaka. Murderers? Yeah, in Mahasaka. Uh, as in just murdering people for the sake of it? I don't understand. Uh, people used to kill their own people. Oh, community. okay, so and today they, the reason why. they just go out and say, today I'm going to kill this person. Yeah, and uh, people, the king come upon and then they warn how they can help themselves so that they can be, uh, they can... Stop the murder, huh? Yeah, that's okay. the reason why we have some cases like that in this parliament. For sure. But the political issues are not allowed in this parliament. Mm. They are only a part of additional issues. Mm. Besides, when we had some contradictions within the central government, yet for instance, in 2010, it was a proposal whereby President Museveni wanted the English to be our national language and remove Logan and the syllabus, eh? which was brought here, and the king decided English should be our national language and Uganda remains on the syllabus. For sure. It's still a proposal, but uh, this time around, uh, this year, they have brought another proposal of uh, Swahili. So, they want to be Swahili to be our national language. In Uganda? And Uganda remains on the syllabus. That's what the king decided. But so, Uganda should be the national language now, as it is the central part of Uganda. Um, it's the third language. Oh, in, Luga in Uganda. In Uganda. In Uganda. Okay. Because we have, um, uh, we have English as an official language. Mm -hmm. Most of the people in Uganda we went to school. They that. Mm -hmm. And Swahili in northern part of Uganda, they know that language. At most, some of the uh, courses, like those who are uh, guards, soldiers, they speak Swahili. Police. The eastern part, they speak Swahili. Okay. Yes. And even in western, few of them can speak Swahili. Due to trading or border border issues. Borders and what, but not any, because we've not been uh, studying that language in school. Mm -hmm. We used to study Luganda. What I can say, Luganda is the third language because those who are in the central are the ones who are speaking Luganda. Luganda. Mm -hmm. And uh, to communicate with others when you reach to Kampala city. It's not more about English, but Uganda. For sure. When you understand Uganda, you can communicate with, with others. Yeah, in Central. Central. Mm -hmm. Not English. Because mm -hmm. few of them who can understand it very well. Uh, Buzungu, as in English, few people in Central Kampala don't understand it very well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, the accent, accent are different because there are many people who are within Kampala City. Because if you see the population size which are within Kampala City, mm -hmm. that is 7 million. Mm -hmm. Five millions are the ones who uh, sleep within Kampala City, and two millions are the ones who work within Kampala City. Okay. So we have different categories of mm -hmm. tribes which are within the central, mm -hmm. whereby 
not all those people can understand that language. The accent are different. Mm -hmm. You might find yourself where you're saying, let's I'm going to the palace and people take you to the parish. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have that dialect but for if sure. It's Luganda, mm -hmm. most of them, even if they're not Tapaganda, they can at least speak that language. Oh they hear at yeah. least, okay. Listen to it and able to communicate. Uh, in this parliament, we don't vote to elect the parliamentary ones to come up with those uh, people mm. and then all their names. And they, the king can decide the one who can become a means of tourism, agriculture, and others. If you've been appointed in this parliament, you're not allowed to hesitate. You're not allowed to hesitate. Uh, for example, if huh? I've been appointed as a means of tourism in Uganda, mm -hmm. We don't swear in by raising a Bible up Quran according to your religion, it is tradition. Mm -hmm. I have to go nearby that red carpet and then I kneel down to the king. I introduce myself to the king that I'm now Tasfida from Pangolin clan. My mom is from the Maki and I married to Elephant clan. I'll be able to fulfill my duties as a means of tourism in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And I'll be able to feel too fulfill my duties as a means of tourism. Mm -hmm. I make sure that I put tourism on the top of Uganda. Mm -hmm. Long live Aisawa Sajia Kabaka. There is only even there which has the two spears, the shield, and even the land. Land that is our king, because our king is as strong as that land. If you find a land in a bush, it scares you, and you can't just turn and run. Mm. You first follow that land, to see whether it is following you or it has not seen you and then you turn to run. Eh? Yes. So you go towards the lion? Yeah. Okay. So the same applies to the king. Okay. You want the spear and even the shield. Mm -hmm. Since you're protecting the king, you keep on moving backwards until you're supposed to see. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to show your backs at the king. You don't turn around. Mm -hmm. So you walk back? Yeah. Okay. It's a sign of respect to the king. For sure. Men prostrate to the king. Okay. Uh, After which... that, they turn their heads as if they are crossing the road three times. And after that, they introduce themselves as I've done, and then they hold a spear and a shield, and then they keep moving backwards until they are supposed to see. That's the way of swearing in this parliament. Wow, okay, so... So that is uh, King Mutasawan. It's not the first king, but cameras in Uganda started during the reign of King Mutasawan. But uh, we have only five portraits inside, though the current king is the 36th king. And this is the current king? Yeah. He brought education in Uganda. Just a one. This is the current king of the Buganda kingdom. Yeah, the current king who is now 67 years young. Mm -hmm. He has five children. The first child is a boy. Whereby in our culture, the first child is a boy is not allowed to succeed. Eh? Yeah, his duty is to look after the family. Okay. So, three in the middle, the daughters, princesses, which can succeed the king. So, it'll be the princess so next. No. Princesses are not allowed. Okay, so. So, the last born is a boy, is the one who. who can it, succeed. Oh, wow. But according to the constitution of Uganda, if the king delivers only baby girls, he looks mm -hmm. after the brothers. If the brothers are too old, those are the sons of brothers and pick one, but it has oh, so, so no woman can be the queen of Buganda kingdom? No. The queen is there a reason the for that? Of the king. So, so the, the, because in England we had a queen for, I think, 70 plus years. Mm -hmm. So in Buganda kingdom that is not possible? Not possible. Is there a reason for that? Or? Yes, there is a reason for that because we marry outside the family. It okay. The family, the royal family or the ruling family will go beyond to other families. Because mm -hmm. if I marry to another tribe, it means that my children will belong to another tribe which will become a king or a queen within the Buganda kingdom. But biologically, they are not Buganda. Not Buganda okay. Which uh, the people say in Buganda, it's not good for the women to sit on the throne. For sure. Because for the boys or the men that are in their clans or their family they deliver babies into that family mm. for us we deliver babies but they're not ours they go to another family that's mm. the reason why they can't allow any princess to sit on the ground okay either it can be a brother 
if the king doesn't have any son or a, a son of that brother, but it has never happened. The king is called Tava Sadia because mar he, marries one ma he marries more than one wife. Okay. Whereby you have chances to have the sons. Okay? So that is King Uta someone who brought education in Uganda. And he ruled from 1856 to 1884. He disappeared and he was succeeded by a son called King Daniel Mwanga II. Daniel Mwanga, he ruled from 1884 up to 1887. Daniel Mwanga is the one who established the palace where you're going mm. in 1885. Daniel Mwanga is the one who done the king's leg, a man made leg in East Africa. It's still there in the area. He wanted the canals to connect to Lake Victoria because he had another palace at Munyonyo and even for shipping goods. And Daniel Manga turned the Buganda into a protectorate in 1894. With the British? Yeah, with the British. Okay. And Daniel Manga. So he colluded with the British? Yeah. Instead of fighting the British? <laughs> of Finally, he fought with the British. So he fought with the after, British? After mm -hmm. the protection, mm -hmm. he requested for the position of Buganda and they never answered him. He created a war between the British and himself. Okay. But he was defeated. Because the British, had military arms, hmm? the British had military arms, the British had guns while Buganda didn't? Was that the reason he got defeated? Defeated? No, no, no. Mm. Uh, the, the, the British were more powerful by that time. For sure. Uh, they had their governors who were there in Uganda by that time. Okay. And by that time, people were speaking English. Remember, we had um, just someone who brought education. Some were not good by that time. So education was brought through through English? Yeah. Oh, okay. They didn't know how to write. You can sign papers when you don't know what you're signing for. For sure. <laughs> it happens and today. <laughs> you a lot of things and then you realize that these people are very... Sabotaged him. Yeah. So the British That's and the, the people... Okay, he had to. And then he said, when he was uh, a king, mm -hmm. when he asked for the position and they never answered him, they were taking his kingdom mm. into a country, which he didn't realize at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And finally, he fought, he was hoped by Kabarega of Kunyoro, mm. but they were defeated. And he was exiled to Sicily's island. In Lake Victoria? No, in Indian. Okay, S S Zanzibar, so Kenya. Tanzania. Tanzania, okay. Indian Ocean. So, Daniel Manga, when he was there, they asked him whether he liked his kingdom mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. He said yes. He was baptized, and that's why he got that name, Daniel. We didn't have those Christian names. Okay, so uh, when the British came, they brought Christian mercenaries with them. Well, they, they built those churches. Mm -hmm. You know, during the reign of King Mutesa I, mm -hmm. he was living at Rubaga Cathedral, which was a palace for him. Okay. When he requested uh, for, the, for the church mission society mm -hmm. and those missionaries to come here mm -hmm. to teach us how to read and write, because mm -hmm. for him, he made a standard. H.M. Stanley, and then he's the one who taught him how to read and write and everything. And he wanted to give that chance to the people in Uganda. Mm -hmm. That's why he wrote a letter, which you're going to find at the palace, for sure. requesting for the teachers and missions to come to Uganda mm -hmm. to spread Christianity mm -hmm. and even their knowledge which they have into their country, country the technology which they have. Mm -hmm. So when they came here, the mm -hmm. first thing which they did. He asked them what they are going to do, and they explained to him that uh, they have come for peace to teach him uh, people how to read and write and even to spread Christianity. So they were given that here in Namurenda. They built a church, a hospital, and even a school. Namurenda Hospital, huh? Namurenda. Namurenda. Okay. You see the church on the top? For sure. Mm -hmm. So when they built a church, a hospital and even a school. He appreciated a lot what they did. Mm -hmm. And after two years, in 1879, he invited the others, the white fathers from France. So Bazungus, he yes. brought, okay. And the English were, okay. were given that seal, which was attacked by a disease called the smallpox. 
And then he went to Kasubi, Nabulagala. Mm -hmm. He left the church with the, uh, the people from France. Mm -hmm. So but, uh, the English people, the yeah. French people, yeah. Bazungu, okay. They also built a church there, a hospital, and even a school. Oh, wow, okay. But unfortunately, in 1884, he disappeared. Mm -hmm. You understand now? Understood. So that's the reason why he died when he didn't have any Christian name. He disappeared when he had a Christian name, Daniel, because he was baptized, mm. knowing that he's coming back to his kingdom. Mm. But even if they baptized him, they never returned his dead. His, they returned him in this kingdom. Mm. But afterwards, he died from there in 1903 and they returned his dead body in 1910 ah, okay. after seven years mm. when his son Daudicho was already a king mm. Daudicho succeeded the dad when he was only one year eh? at the time when he went into exile that's when he sat on the throne so he came with the regents who helped him. When he reached 18 years, he was old enough to enter the kingdom. Let's look at him about it. Daudi Chua, he became a full king when he was 18 years. Mm. Those people had to move away. Mm. So in 1913, he's the one who first visited the European countries. And when he reached to England, he discovered that all people in that country, women, they are eating eggs and chicken. Eggs and chicken? Uganda, Girls were not, or women are not allowed to eat eggs and chicken. Okay. They used to say, we'll not be able to conceive and even to deliver babies. Oh, because of the egg and chicken? Yeah. Okay. We'll become infertility. But when he came back, he permitted the old women to eat eggs and chicken. And it is that because of King Daudicho. Daudicho also discovered that all women in that country were educated. Yet in the Buganda, girls are not allowed to go to school. They used to say when he reached for 14 years or going for our marriages and that is wasted of money. But when he came back, he convinced all the families to take their daughters at school. We educated because of King Daoicho. So he allowed women empowerment, education, yeah. he showed them the value of this because he went to the Western powers. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Daoicho, he was interested in a football soccer and brought that match in Uganda. He became the former president of Uganda by that time. Now, he admired a lot of buildings in England. We used to build thatched houses, and it's the one who first built a modern palace. Where are you going? Now, he disappeared in 1939, and he was succeeded by son called King Freddy. Freddy requested for the independence of Uganda Kingdom from the British, but in their accents and writings, they wrote Uganda. Instead of writing Buganda, they used to pronounce Uganda. Uganda instead of Buganda. Yes, and okay. that's what they wrote. We had the Prime Minister who was called Milton, but who signed all the papers to form Uganda from the Uganda Kingdom. And that king became the first constitutional president of Uganda, where they dreamed us that the king can be a politician. So Milton Obote had all the powers to become a president, but he went to a neighboring country, Congo, and he collapsed the ivory from there. Which annoyed King Freddy and told him to return that ivory. That case was brought in this parliament, mm. and they are not yet uh, reached to the decision. But you have the, uh, the, 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 what, the, the journalist who was called John Jones, who printed out all the information in a newspaper, mm. and that annoyed Milton Obote. What he did is to attack the palace so that he kills King Freddy and take all the and is that what Milton Aboti did? Yeah. Okay. Aboti attacked the palace in 1966 24th May, helped by Idi Amin. Idi Amin Dada. Yes. Okay. He was when future. Attacked, okay. Freddie managed to escape from that palace and, he went to free, and we went to exile in London. Mm. And he was there. Aboti became the second president of Uganda. That palace turned into a military barracks. He abolished all the kingdoms. The royal mail turned into a republic road, and this parliament turned into a republic house. So after two years, in 1969, Freddie had a birthday party from there. And Oboti raped a certain woman who went there. Then she London. Eh? On his birthday. Okay. And he never returned his dead body until when Idi Amin took all the powers. 
1971, he went to Singapore for a Commonwealth meeting. Mm. And Id Amin announced himself as the third president of the Ghana. Through military coup, or he just walked into Kampala and said he's the king? He declared as the third president. So he just walked, he just walked into Parliament and declared himself? Yes. And no one fought him, no? No. So Idi Amin... Put all the soldiers at the, into the airport so that yeah. he can't allow Obote to come back. So when Obote came back, he saw what happened, he went back into exile? No, he didn't come back. Oh, he didn't come back? He didn't bother to come back. He wanted to have uh, some solutions how he can come back and mm -hmm. he went to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. He had a friend who was called Nyeleri, the president of Tanzania. Mm -hmm. He gave him the soldiers when he was a president. Mm -hmm. They did all the tactics so that he can overthrow Idi Amin. Mm -hmm. But Idi Amin ruled for eight years. First, in 1971, he first returned the dead body of King Freddy. Mm -hmm. He attacked the minds of people in Uganda, who were in Uganda by that time that he was a good person. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, he built a torture chamber which you're going to meet there. Mm -hmm. And then, in 1979, that's when Obote came with soldiers and they fought. Mm. We had some leaders who first ruled for one uh, one month, two months, one year, then Obote took over in 1981. But they're under the same umbrella. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, those are the 27 years when they attacked the palace in 1966. That attack up to 1993 when the current king was gone to the throne. We didn't have a cake. But since Buganda is based on three pillars, mm. the pillar of the clan heads were there, and the prime minister by that time was there, but for the king, we didn't have the king. So they are running there. So Buganda kingdom was still running, but there was no king? Yeah. Okay, and then the king was reinstated in 93? Yeah. Okay, F through the current president? Or? Yeah, through the current president, because it was an agreement. Mm between him and the kings to give him support at uh, uh, Katonga Bridge. So they decided if I put you into the powers, you'll be able to return all the properties for Buganda Kingdom. Okay. Those are some of the land titles which are coming back. Uh, some buildings, but some are still requesting for them that not yet brought back. Okay. So we have 150 parliamentaries in this. And the term is five years. Five. How often do they meet up? Once a week? Twice a week? Uh, it, it used to be every, every Thursday, but right mm. now the Christmas the period has eight sessions within. Okay. They meet in that cabinet room, not here. Here, there are eight sessions. A year? Hmm? Eight sessions a year? A year. Okay.